Now, you see, most people in classes like this, they can start thinking the thing through on the Old Testament. They say, yes, the Old Testament is true. That I can see that all Scripture aforetime is for our learning in the Old Testament. But I can't see where the four Gospels are Old Testament. Well, they are. They should never have been placed in the New Testament. Jesus Christ said he came unto his what? His own. And his own received him not. Who were his own? The Jew, Israel. Jesus Christ came to his, his own. Uh, isn't there a record here that it says just this in Corinthians someplace? Romans 15, 8. That's good. That's where it is. Thank you. I thought it was in Corinthians, but it's Romans 15. Here in this book of Romans, it tells us specifically in verse 8 that Jesus Christ was a minister of the what? Circumcision. And the circumcision were who? The Jew. The word preposition of is the preposition to in the text, Greek text. Jesus Christ was a minister to the circumcision. You see, he came unto his own, Israel. He came to the Jews. He ministered to the Jews. He always carried out the law. He fulfilled the law which was addressed to the Jews. Now after the book of Malachi, after the book of Malachi, there was about 400 years in there before the Savior came. But when Jesus Christ came, his scripture says he fulfilled the law. He came unto his own. He was a minister to the circumcision. Jesus Christ never came to found the church to which you and I belong. He came to redeem Israel. He came to make that Israel full. But because they rejected him and something occurred on the day of Pentecost making possible the church to which you and I belong, is the difference. You know, there are so many things in the Gospels, so many things in the Gospels, that unless you understand this scripture, all scripture for, uh, before the day of Pentecost is for our learning, the Gospels will contradict what it says in the church epistles addressed to us. It will just contradict. For instance, in the Gospels, salvation is dependent upon forgiving others. If you forgive men their trespasses, the scripture says, then I will forgive you your trespasses. It says something else. If you will confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But in the church epistles, it doesn't say anything about forgiving men their trespasses or their sins. It doesn't say anything in the church epistles about confessing him before men. It says just the opposite. It says you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart Man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now there you have a contradiction. In the Gospels it says you confess him then he'll, before men, then he will confess you before the Father. In the church epistles it says you simply confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior from sin. Believe God raised him from the dead, you're saved. How, do you, how can you reconcile the contradiction? Only one way, by simply taking these scriptures that we have read tonight, that all scripture aforetime is for our what? Learning. Then the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, closed the Old Testament. He fulfilled the law. He carried it out. When he died upon the cross, the last thing he said was what? It is what? What was finished? 
the old covenant, the everything that the law had endeavored to do, all that was finished. That's what he came to do. He came to finish it, to complete it, to fulfill it. And people, one of the saddest facts of our civilization, the Christian believers among them, is that they have taken these four Gospels and put them in what we call the New Testament. Had they placed them where God placed them to begin with and where they were until the scholars thought they knew more than God himself, they were in the Old Covenant. They closed the Old Testament. Look at the book of James. James chapter 1. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the what? Twelve what? Tribes which are scattered abroad. To whom is the book of James addressed? To the twelve what? That's what it says. That's what it means. Plain as day, isn't it? Why, sure. Look at Peter. May not be quite as clear to you here, but it's very plain if you've got understanding. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers. The word strangers is the word in the Greek, dispora. And the word dispora refers to the dispersion Jews, the Jews that were dispersed in Alexandria and other places were referred to as the diaspora. Some of your Bibles may have this in the center reference or in the margin. You may have the word diaspora. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers, the dispersed Jews, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. You see, they're all marked. Now the problem has been that not only have we brought to us the Old Testament and the Gospels like as if they're addressed to us, but we have taken books like Hebrews and James and some of the rest which are not specifically to the church, and we have acted as if they were specifically addressed to us, and that's why we can't handle certain sections of them. Now, you can only have one question left in your mind regarding this great truth. Why then, if all scripture of four time before the day of Pentecost is for our learning, why are you then, Dr. Werwell, saying that some scripture after the day of Pentecost is still not specifically to us, but only in one sense for our learning? The reason I'm saying this is because this is exactly what the Bible says. In Acts chapter 21, Acts chapter 21. Verse 20 is the verse I want to read in a moment. But I want to tell you some things that came up in class this past week and also you will recall from other teaching that as Paul ministered the word of God in the synagogue, he always got into trouble with the heads of the synagogues and so forth. And wherever he went, the circumcisers came along afterward to take the Christian believers who were born again of God's Spirit, but who had not had enough time to be instructed in the greatness of God's Word to get them to turn their heads and to get them circumcised and put them back under the law. And here in this 20th verse, when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, that is, unto Paul, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which do what? Believe. Were they born again? Surely. Saved. But they had not renewed their mind on the word of God. They didn't know the word of God. They didn't understand it. They didn't apply it. That's why the last phrase, but they are all zealous of what? That's right. 
and the book of Hebrews, the book of James, Peter. These are addressed to Jewish believers who were born again, but who were still legalistic, who still wanted to hold on to their water baptism, their circumcision, all these other rites, they, which they had had before they got born again. And after they got born again, they wanted to take all this legalism in with them. They were born believers, born again, but they were still zealous for what? And that's about as far as any church member has ever gone. If he's born again, he is still zealous for the law. And all water baptism and all this other stuff that we go through is all a zealousness for the law. Therefore, most Christians could really could never greatly read the epistles addressed to them because they wouldn't understand them, for they are still in the enslavement of Hebrews and James and Peter because they have not accepted the greatness of God's revelation that God gave. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul says, and he gives us the Word of God. It's the Apostle Paul's Word, words, but it is God's Word he is speaking. He said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us what? And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What's the yoke of bondage? The law. Plain as day. But according to Acts, we read a little while ago, they were believers, but they were still zealous for what? And the law is the yoke of bondage, understand? So they were still binding themselves up in that yoke of bondage. And therefore, you have these epistles addressed to Hebrews, James, Peter, and so forth.